our country's in terrible shape. Some people say it's a disaster, and some people say, well, maybe it isn't the human brain that is bringing us to the, the, the point of our Armageddon. If I sound uh, fos- foggy or sometimes incoherent, it's because I've had a stroke about three weeks, three months ago. We have things going helter-skelter, sideways, upside down. We're here in San Francisco at a, a conference which deals with the unknown. People are trying to put it together. There's one man, Dr. Spencer. You say, well, what can one man do to combat the evils that exist in the world? We have uh, in our company Trevor Coppola, an actor. You say, well, what the hell? What is an actor? How what does he know? Instinctively, the actor and... Uh, a gal named Ju Ka Shi has picked up on the vibrations in this in the room and the, the of things that are going on that are unseen that are unheard, but something is going on. Something is guiding us. Could it be that there is a, an unseen brain? Uh, Dr. Spencer, as a neurologist, explains this in his reports. And it's just not one explanation. It's many explanations talking about many things that's happening in the world. We're going to have Dr. Spencer talk to you. In the way that he he can, that only in a way that he can only talk to you. So I'm going to introduce Dr. Spencer to you and to the world. And uh we'll have on this conversation joining us Jukai Shi. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Jukai Shi. And um, my friend, um, the actor, guide in with an explanation in his words. How would he explain what's happening to this world? How would he happen, happen to be able to explain? Hollywood. God knows Hollywood is vile and vicious and doing all sorts of unspeakable things behind the scenes. I've been in Iowa. I've been in Hollywood for a small period of time in my life uh, in charge of production. But the guys behind the cameras are working things. They're creating the illusions. They're creating the the, uh, the pizzazz. They're co- coming up with all that jazz. Well, Dr. Spencer is a fr- longtime friend of mine and a patriot. He is going to explain what is happening to the brain, to our brain. I've just had a stroke, and I think, well, is it possible that uh, I'm one of the victims, that they can cause strokes? Can they cause an individual to have a brain injury? I've got a friend, uh, 
who had one for a period of time. His name is Roosevelt Greer. He's made, made it through the, the, the maze and, the, 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 and he's out of the cloud cover. But I want Dr. Spencer to tell us, is it possible? Is it plausible? Are we to believe that uh, there's another, are we to believe that there's another entity around? Is, are we to believe that there's uh, some people who think that, that they're, they're smarter than we are? Or who literally think they know they're smart, smarter than we are? Are they Zionazis? Are they, uh, we've heard about that term for a period of time. Are they controlling the show? Let's introduce uh, Dr. Ed Spencer. He's got the facts. He's got the book. He's got the answers. Ed, it's your baby now. Dr. Ed, it's time for you to stand up here and tell us where we're going and where we've been and... Uh, is the big brain in operation? Are they guiding us in some way? Were they in existence for a period of time? Can they actually create strokes? Can they actually create hate, chaos, and havoc? Guys like me are in a hell of a mess. It's time you talk to one of the leading... Uh, neurologist uh, who's gone behind the scenes, who's gone behind the, the closed doors. So, Dr. Ed. Yes. Good to work with you again. Well, I'm a, I'm a neurologist. I'm a retired neurologist. And um, I'm not liked. Uh, all old friends don't like me. Uh, my family doesn't like me. Uh, and uh, I believe that this is because I am quite persistent in, in following something. And um, I don't like being lied to. And uh, the system that we're in, the government, the, the talking heads, the presidents, the prime ministers, are in the business of lying. You don't get almost any truth anywhere, uh, it seems to me. And... Uh, you look at it, well, you couldn't have any big truth there because it would be a benchmark. If you really talked about what happened in 9-11, that would be a benchmark. If you talked about who killed Kennedy and started studying it, that would be a benchmark, benchmark that you'd measure other things against. So uh, the problem is our minds are severely clouded uh, and confused, probably in more ways, certainly in more ways than I understand. And uh, they're becoming more clouded and confused all the time. And um, at this time, this era, let's say, the, the last few years, 10 years, the physical attacks on our brains are um, escalating. And those physical attacks include um, vaccinations. Um, there's a book that points out that one kid went from an IQ of 143 to 103 after he suffered brain infl inflammation from a vaccination. And autism is uh, on the rise, uh, incredibly. And everything, uh, we're told that it, this is just, it's our fault, essentially. Everything uh, somehow our fault. Our genes aren't right. We just, we're not right. We're not good. That's the message that's always coming at us, that we're not smart, that we're not good enough that we're wrecking the earth, that we're moving gravel when it shouldn't be moved, when Mother Nature doesn't want it moved, we're using too much oil, et cetera, et cetera, and forth, so forth. The message out there is get off. Get off the planet and let the thing go to its beautiful, natural 
itself. Are they trying to reduce the population of this planet? Well, yeah. Yeah, there, there are, uh, there's the, the Guidestones, the Georgia Guidestones are written in stone, said that the population should be 500 million, the people speaking one language, one religion, one such and such. So that's one, uh, that's one source. <coughs> Catherine Austin Fitz came up uh, with a number of uh, reduction of about 93% based on her economic calculations. And a friend of hers, a colleague, um, asked her to lunch, and he had come up with the same answer independently. So that's three sources that have said that um, the population is to go down. And we see this all around us. We see this with the GMO foods. We see it with the uh, heavy metals and uh, particulates and uh, being sprayed from the uh, chemtrails, which don't exist. We're bathed in uh, electromagnetic radiation, and um, it's everywhere, far more than you need for cell phones, which are dangerous in and of themselves. Uh, and then we were eating Fukushima right and left. The thing blew up, probably with sabotage, that's what I understand, and it hasn't been entombed, and it's still there spewing it. And uh, the first thing the United States did was to close down um, monitoring stations as soon as the cloud came this way. Well, are you saying this was all by design? Well, yes, I'm saying that this is by design. This is, this is not an accident. Well, no. No, of course not. Now, you've had Ju Tai Shi. Uh, she's in the room today. No. Well, I'm going to call her Joe because I can't get my mouth around that one. To Chai C, it's going to be Joe for me. And, <laughs> and Trevor, uh, Trevor has been in Hollywood and seen all of this stuff going on, the lies upon lies upon lies, the layers of lies. Well, it's all, it's, it's all lies. It's a matrix of lies. The world can be described as running by conspiracy. And the thing is, maybe conspiracy is an ad inadequate word because it's kind of puny, tiny, for the really the big, overwhelming bamboozle that's going on. But, you know, if you don't, if you're, don't believe that there's a widespread conspiracy, um, you're going to die. You're just going to sit by the side of the road and sprout for more, more gallons. I'm, I'm sorry. It's time to face the fact that we're under attack and to figure out who's executing the attack, how they're executing the attack, and, uh, and do something about it. You're saying that the Fukushima earthquake was uh, underwater quake was by design. Well, that's what I understand. But I really haven't studied up on Fukushima. So I really don't want to go there at this point. Uh, the, the best website that I know of is Gemstone Freelance. Now, I was just told that his website is infected, and it probably should be because it's so good. It's not going to be left untouched. But he's the source on this, Gemstone Freelance. Um, now, so I want to bring in a couple, a couple of the people in this cast of characters. And, and I'm thinking that it can't possibly be as bad as you think. You have to actually believe that it's worse. It's far worse than you think or ever thought it could be. Well, my, uh, my, uh, my study that I've done since 1996 uh, leads me to conclude that we're essentially in a war of the world. Only everybody has been on the planet all along. And we make the weapons for the other side, our idiot uh, techno nerds are producing these weapons that kill us and blow away their own testicles. And, uh, and we're, we're subverted and betrayed by our own species. And what I would have to say is that uh, uh, frailties and weaknesses of the human mind are being exploited by uh, yeah, the our power. Our own species under attack by people who claim to be doing things for us 
when they're doing things to us. Well, yeah. Uh, gee, I don't have it. I can't come up with a, um, the blurb uh, or the, or the uh, statement by uh, Carl Jaspers on, on this is that, you know, everything is uh, just a lie. Everything is, uh, it promises you security and it takes away security. It never tells you the truth. No, it's a big lie. <laughs> you get, you get half-truths. You get half-truths. You get some benefit. Uh, you get a deception. Uh, you get something that, that appeals to you. It's all good in together, this thing. And we need to d work on developing terminology to uh, identify this stuff. A lot of it comes out of the White House. I mean, people are, you know, they, sp they talk about speaking out of both sides of their mouth, of course. Of course, sir, uh, that's, that's happened. The both sides of their nose. Well, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, anyway, we get nothing but lies, and there's almost uh, no um, benchmark, mo no, no point that you can really um, fixate on to understand uh, what's going on. A reference point, I guess, would be the word I would use. And uh, if this is a philosophical matter. And uh, really, we, we need a philosophy, a f philosophy that works. And what I'm thinking of is, I'm calling it harsh, a harsh philosophy. Because you've got to throw away a lot of stuff. The primary thing is survival of the species. That's the primary thing. And a lot of stuff that makes you feel good, you may just have to throw away. I'm talking about the elimination of the species. Well, I think actually the, uh, the, the species will be... Uh, the death of man on, on Earth. Well, it's, you know, whether there's nothing like us walking the planet, uh, there will be nothing that is like us that we would have been or, w or were walking the planet because there are all of these uh, various t technologies being applied, uh, including more gallons, to modify Homo sapiens. Uh, and so uh, we're not going to be the same thing. So I, I, say, I would say that we are going to be extinct. Well, you're, you're making a monster movie, and you've got a, a filmmaker over here yeah. who would like to make a film about the horrors that we, that we saw in a monster movie back in the late 40s or early 50s, uh, they, or whoever they was, about well, the, the uh, what, what was it? I don't think I saw that one, but. Oh, you, you've seen it? He's too young, maybe. He's, he's too young, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I can't, um, I can't remember the movie, frankly, at this point. Um. But what, yeah, we need to make movies, all the movies. There are movies that are actually... The monster came from outer space, and it was, it was like a vegetarian, so he, was, he, he, he would eat up everything, kill the, everybody. The blob? Not well, the blob. It was more than the blob. Body snatchers. Well, anyway, um, whatever that movie was, any movie that has the evil coming from outer space is uh, disinformation propaganda, in my point of view, because um, we don't have interstellar transportation or travel at this time. We have a lot of words going out there. People say you travel by w a wormhole. You get on the word and travel through a wormhole. Uh, we don't we don't travel through space. We don't exceed the speed of light, and uh, everyone, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, we can do that." They're doing it somewhere. They understand, and then they'll throw some words together. I haven't uh, really seen convincing evidence, and other people haven't seen convincing evidence. And in about 1950, Enrico Fermi, who was a brilliant physicist, asked the question, "Where are they?" Yeah, where is everybody? And he, he said, even you know, at snail's pace transportation, we should find somebody around us, but we don't. And, um, and then they found in your research, haven't they found a brain? 
a quasi-human brain larger and more complicated well. <laughs> than, than in a normal... Like, yes. Yeah, yes, yes, this, this has been found. And uh, this would probably uh, constitute a crypto-terrestrial. And this is very important because uh, and you talk to so many people, and they're off in space. They're all extraterrestrials are coming. I know a number of women who said, well, we're going to get help from the outside, that something's going to come down and save us. And there is no evidence uh, that anything is outside and is going to come down and save us. That's really important because when you say, oh, they're coming from the outside, then you can relax for a minute and not put your teeth together and not grit and, and fight as is absolutely essential at this time. Well, let's, let's, let's talk, talk to one of the insiders in Hollywood, a fellow who's made, been making movies uh, about all sorts of crap. And uh, we're going to talk to Trevor Coppola, a famous name, and like, would like to do some famous movies and to take up where you're leaving behind. Yeah. Trevor, there are deeply disturbing questions. We're the, hey, taking a look at, you listen to uh, Alex Jones. All right. They're talking about eliminating 85% of the people on the planet Earth. They're not only intending to do so, they're in the process of doing it so. I'm just one who's had a, an attack upon my brain. And you say, well, hell, you're still talking. Well, I still am talking, and I'm goddamn going to stand up and talk to, to people about this. Um, what's your reaction to the conversation coming from Dr. Spencer? Do you have any idea what the hell he's talking about? I'm talking about an enormous brain. You can take a look at some of these charts. These guys have made Goliaths look like a, a, a creature mouse. A Goliath in human form that has been born in this earth. They, they, did, they didn't just dig, dig these guys out of, the, out of the rocks. They were alive at one time. And maybe remnants of the same, these people are still alive. What do you think about this? We're talking about a monster movie. Yeah, I saw the pictures. I don't know if we can show them on camera later, maybe, of the just gigantic skulls. I mean, they don't... Uh they don't even look real, but they are real. With the um, with the big brain, is there any way to tell what was the body above average size, or do you think the body was our size? I think the body was close to our size, and that's from from this one report I'm saying from uh, Lynch and Granger, and there are other things in in, in another book. Um, the bodies, I think, were close. The skeletons were close to our size, so I, I, I don't think they were were giants. But I'm not sure. But at this point, I know that some of the skeletons were of normal size. How old are those skulls? Uh, the giant skulls? Do they have any idea? You know, I don't uh, know uh, really. Uh, the and and this is a, this is why don't we know? Well, this is a, a verboten. Uh, topic. We don't study this, and I can get into that later when uh, trying to wake people up or uh, I'll ask questions. It's a, they're ignored. Now, if you, you've seen the picture, the skull had hair and skin still attached to it, and that was sent to a, a, a DNA geneticist. I mean, the thing is crying to be studied. 
but as far as I know, it hasn't been studied. Certainly, I don't get any response from the people I uh, send letters to, except for one case, which I, I, I will describe, in which the, uh, I think the uh, recipient uh, missed the first email, so he sent the back something on the, an, an addendum that I sent. And then when I sent the pictures again of the skull, silence, you know? They're archaeologists, paleontologists, whatever. We study the brain. We study the, the history of humanity. We st study the fossils. But they ignore it. I, you know, I really can't uh, say otherwise at this point. Now, we're actually yeah. taking a look at some entities that have come to our, before our cameras more than once. And we see these guys in not only monster movies, but, but in real life movies about uh, things that were taken at uh, Area 51. Well, you know, I'm not going to get into Area 51. The government is in the business of propaganda. They don't tell you the truth on anything. You know, they say, well, why don't they admit to uh, UFOs? Why don't they tell us about the UFOs? Well, what, what's, what's taking those lights across the sky, you know? They, they make it, their career is to lie to us. I think William Casey said, uh, when the American, when absolutely everything the American believe, Americans believe is false, then the CIA will have done its job. Now, what kind of an idiot is that, that uh, William Casey, to have, to have said that? Well, that's, I think he's a standard fool. Uh, and this is, this, is a, this is a species thing, uh, <coughs> I, almost a negative IQ. Um, people who think they're smart are intensely fooled. And the smarter they are, and maybe even in an absolute sense they're smarter, the easier they are to, to be fooled oh, because they bribed. A Chinese girl, gorgeous Chinese girl, she's in all, all sorts of uh, activities asking the same questions. They, well, they, they, there seemed to be another being the people. Well, the Chinese are different. They're built different. They think different. And I'm going to ask our guest, uh, Ju Kai Si, Ju Kai Si, uh, what the hell is happening? UCLA's research coming out of China. Maybe the Chinese should figure out who the hell the brain is and what the hell is happening to the, the brain. Some answers. What do you see? You, you've seen the, the stuff that... Uh... Well, what happened doctor, is... It's coming up with this. Well, what happened is the whole world is under the uh, suppressing of the information and the only person knows things considers conspiracy, which is reality, it's in this land. And uh, most people around the world, they have no clue what's going on because the propaganda and around the world. And the old information are uh, censored for, I think, for the last hundreds of years. And so uh, that's the reason we cannot move forward, because if nobody knows the facts, how can it be convinced or uh, reciprocate for the information? If they don't have a basic data, how can they digest those information? Even with noble uh, Chinese people, actually I was uh, with Ed today, stopped by one of the stores, and I, I talked to them, and they say, uh, uh, what are you doing here? I say, well, it's a conference here, conspiracy. So I try to explain to them. And you know what these people say? Oh, don't worry, we're safe. We're in America. Nobody's going to bother us. 
And this uh, in the community of Chinese, especially those uh, a very, very high scholar uh, academia uh, industry, and they are all brainwashed and uh, all uh, propaganda by the uh, by the indoctrination of the education system here. They are extremely possessed, not possessed uh, whatever is po everything the West tried to sell to them. Democracy, democratic, democracy, everything else. Do you believe that there's a conspiracy? Oh, definitely. To, to reduce the population of the planet to the lowest common denominator. Of course. Uh, Bill Gates, the CEO of Microsoft, on his conference, he said vaccination will eliminate, eradicate, actually, that's the word he used. He said eradicate billions of the people around the world. And his code has been a, a permeated all over the website. And so uh, that's just one of the uh, element channel to eliminate the human race. Dr. Spencer, you know, even your family thinks that some of your family thinks, well, this guy's crazy. He's not. And uh, my friend over here, uh, who's going to the first conspiracy conference ever in his life, is listening to Dr. Spencer. And we're coming forth with data, which is absolutely unbelievable, if you want to call it that. Well, I'm going to get, what I think I'll do at this point, I'll just give a quick overview, a sort of a, you might call a core dump on what the situation is. We don't know history. We shut off history uh, at about 6,000 years ago. But history really goes back into the Ice Age, so 100,000 years or, or so. Uh, there was a definitely another species on the planet uh, with a big brain, at least 30% larger than ours, and probably more than one species. Homo capensis is the one described in big brain that has a 30% larger brain. And uh, the neuroscientists did a calculation uh, on the increase in the size of the association area based on the increase in size in the brain, and they came up with something like an IQ of 149 average with 10 to 15 percent of the population at 180 or above. That's quite a lot. Now, if you look at plain old Homo sapiens, you have the Jewish people apparently at 117, the or, or Asians at 106, the whites at, at 100. So that's not, of course, a really an IQ, because you have to sit them down and test them and send them a bill. But you know, it says a lot about uh, uh, brain power. And there's actually some stories that suggest uh, that other people have encountered this and have seen it. Now, these uh, these um, uh, brain uh, people, these this this these this species, big brain species. Um, probably mapped the Earth during the Ice Age, the entire Earth, because the, I, uh, the Earth was mapped during the Ice Age when sea level was 400 feet lower, and there was no ice cap over, um, over the, uh, the coast of Antarctica. So it was definitely mapped, and then th there are undersea megalithic structures all around the world along the coastlines, and then there's evidence remains of a very large civilization in South Africa. And that's approximately where Botskop, where this skull, Homo capensis, was found. We're so there's... We're talking really about the, the creatures that were found in Zimbabwe. I don't, I don't know if Zimbabwe is... I do not know the Zimbabwe. But anyway, that's, there's considerable evidence with these big skulls found around the world Peru and other places, I think in, in, uh, in Russia, the uh, incredible uh, facts that the Earth was mapped by, by uh, entities that understood spherical trigonometry 
and that um, there is this uh, enormous civilization in uh, South Africa. Uh, somebody did that. Something did that. And the real clue here is that it's not studied. The academic world does not study this stuff. So th the veil has been pulled down, and that's evidence in itself. If you don't study it, that's evidence that uh, you're ignoring it. The movie that came up with a lot of this stuff was uh, called the, the, the Thing. Yeah. The Thing was the, uh, the, mo the monster movie. Well, I think movies are all made to uh, manipulate our brains. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't know a movie that I, I would trust. I think that they put out messages there. For instance, the one Oblivion that just went out with a message where there, that something came from outer space and that they wrecked the Earth by blowing up the moon. And uh, now a funny thing happened on the way to the destruction. We had the Twin Towers knocked down by something. They actually weren't knocked down. They were dustified. Most of the structure went up and out. It didn't fall into the basement there, into the pan. So some sort of exotic directed energy weapon sort of unlocked the molecules. And this uh, Dr. Judy Wood is the one who's done this, and naturally the physics department won't hear anything about it. Well, Tre Trevor, you've, s you've seen and heard the story about the... But let, let me finish this, this thing. That, that th there was a report then in, in from Europe, and I, I didn't lock it down. They were building something. Well, they, they thought this, this is the technology could actually damage the Earth. If you linked this thing to the energy of, a, of a, an atomic bomb, a hydrogen bomb, you might actually blow a hole in the Earth. And well, that would wreck your feet, so it does seem like, well, maybe what if you shot it at the moon? In other words, there is significant evidence that the Death Star exists, and it's the thing that took down, or that some form of technology took down the Twin Towers. Now, oh, I interrupted you intentionally. Now, now, you've heard these stories, Trevor. Unbelievable stories, and all denied by Henry Kissinger and uh, the leading politicians in this country. I've had Ron Paul on his, and I asked him, is the story true? He did not fess up to the story. Do you believe that 911, like Alex Jones believes and others of us, that this was a planned inside job? Do you, do you think it happened or do you think this is by accident? What is it? I think it was an inside job. I didn't hear you. I think it was an inside I'm job. Sorry. <laughs> it was an inside job. <laughs> so you're saying that, that 911 was an inside job? Yes, that's what I think. It's a sham? Yeah. It's a scam? Yeah. It's a flim flam fraud? Yeah. It's bullshit. Yeah. Complete and total bullshit from the top to the bottom. Now, we hear. Dr. Spencer, who has himself really quite a large brain, and he's figured this thing out. Should we not be doing stories, real stories, about the, the, the let's do a story, a major story, about this damn thing, about, about this Goliath Let's go back over there to China and just take a look at those, those uh, things that they've discovered out of, out of stone. We, we, we find the, them digging uh, these creatures out of the stone. We see them in this, uh, I've seen them. Creatures that uh, are not simply uh, made up, it's not, it's not, they're not masks. They're not created by people. 
they've been created in loose, uh, let loose upon the public. Dr. Dr. Spencer. Trevor is telling us that it's bullshit. It's a scam. It's a sham. It's a flim flam fraud. And we're here at the conspiracy conference. And we are now, for the, for the first time, actually talking about the brain. With Trevor Coppola, who makes pictures, and has talked to me about making pictures that go deeper and farther and that are more explicit than anything we have heretofore been told. Well, Trevor, um, I know what, Ho I mean, I don't know Hollywood. I mean, I failed when I had my screen test at the age of four or something. My mother wanted me to be the next Shirley Temple. But, um, you know, Hollywood is not to be trusted. Do you think that there is any way of getting uh, information out through Hollywood? Uh, I think it is possible. Um, it's like anything. It, it's not monolithic, but people at the top tend to exert some control over things. But I think if something is a grassroots awakening, I mean, like Gandhi said, no army can stop. Uh, when an idea has come, no army can stop it. It's like, I think people are awakening, and I think messages can get out, and I think the system can change. Um, but it does require some courage, and there are certain movies that do get some messages out there um, that are contrary to what the standard message is. Well, there's a mystery going on right now um, that I'd like to, to uh, work on. I've been, I, I met a, a Japanese woman over the weekend at a conference on the uh, abuse of a co covert technologies, and uh, she is a, is a teacher, or rather, a uh, renowned teacher in Japan, and she noted that the quality of the students was deteriorating, had been deteriorating over a number of years. And uh, I, I guess it certainly is happening here, too. I'd like to know why. I think this is worth studying. Why, uh, why is everyone getting dumber? Is it, is it the curricula which is designed, curriculum, or designed to make them dumb? We know that's there. Uh, but is there, are there uh, physical factors here? Are the, are the vaccinations really catching on? Is the uh, electromagnetic radiation uh, really taking a toll? Japan is chock-a-block with uh, microwave antennas. Um, yeah, it seems like the attack is from every angle. The bisphenol A plastics and the GMO and the hormones in everything. I mean, and the cancer rate is skyrocketing. Every single problem is just increasing. Um, thousands of percent I mean you name it every single thing and there's more health problems so I think the attack is from every angle and I mean so something's going to have to change uh, they claim that the lifespan is increasing but when you adjust for infant mortality it really isn't actually I think um, and the more beast uh, I mean, obesity epidemic I mean America is the fattest country on earth and I mean <laughs> but why is that? I think it's because uh, our it's by, it's by design. It's by design. And one of the reasons is that our minerals are being depleted in the soil, the trace elements. So we don't get enough of them, and our bodies are starved for them in a way. So we have to eat more food. I mean, the attack is just on so many fronts. The chemtrails, I mean, you know, you name it. I mean, there's so many things we could talk about. I have, what I, I have concluded at this point, or at least what I'm thinking at this point, is there a, is a motive here that, that, that the whole thing can be understood um, as a plot, uh, an attack uh, going on over th thousands of years, at least six thousand of years, 
6,000 years, and uh, probably they were training before that, because I think that these things, uh, uh, we've been their chattel all along. We, we are not as nearly as smart as we think we are. And that what they, their goal is to eliminate Homo sapiens and restore their civilization. I mean, this is a war of the world. They want us ineffective and dumb and docile, uh, by all, and made that way by every method possible, and they will restore their civilization, whatever it was. Are you telling, it, telling us they want to dumb us down and numb us down and bring us down? Well, I think that's, yes, that's it. I mean, it, it, this does give a motive. You see, this, this, this the theory of, uh, of the uh, large brain species actually set, covers essentially everything. You can see that they, they, uh, they uh, have mastered the technique of controlling Homo sapiens, their little pets. And uh, among those uh, methodologies is circumcision, because that apparently has a very profound effect on the ability of a man to, to bond with a woman. It actually changes the brain. There's hormonal secretion, secretions and uh, neurological patterns that apparently occur as a result of not being circumcised, and they're gone if you're circumcised. You're telling us that, you know, my God, I've been circumcised. Are you telling me I've knocked out my brain capacity? Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. Oh uh, I'm telling you though, that that uh, probably you probably don't uh, relate to women as well as you would if you hadn't been mutilated. You're sexually mutilated. I to, you know, have argument with him in this, but maybe you know. I guess some women think that some men have all of their. Uh, life in, a, in the, the head of a penis, and uh, I don't think that it is so, but he, he may have an idea. You well, it, it has social ramifications about just the way people behave. It's very subtle. I, uh, the, um, you know, I probably could actually play, hey, let's see, can I play it? I probably could play it. Uh, this fellow Cliff I uh, describes it quite well. So it's on the computer. I could actually probably get it out audio. <coughs> Cliff goes into the, um, he's quite, quite bright, but he gets into the uh, extraterrestrials, which is really into the swamp. Uh, outer space is really a quicksand in a swamp. But it's clearly, um, it's not the thing to do to a little kid. Well, there's about 20 functions, aren't there, that the skin provides at least, because I've studied it. <laughs> And I, yeah, I agree with you. And any way you look at it, it's forced. If you want to chop off a piece of your body when you're of age, it's your choice. But you, do you have a right to do that to someone else against their will? I mean, when they're born, just on that basis, it's an invasion. Well, you know, it's a manipulation. It, I think it's a manipulation. And the timing in which it's done uh, may be highly significant in terms of uh, imprinting the uh, nervous system. Uh, so when, is, when did the Hebrews do it? At the eighth, eighth day eight? That's probably significant. It's significant. I, I think that this shows that they're captured. This is another bit of evidence that would indicate that they've been captured. I've witnessed it happen, and it's barbaric. I mean, they just take this big knife, and they just cut it off, and that baby is just screaming. I mean, when it's done to females, it's considered mutilation. But when it's done the males, it's fine. I don't know why that double standard exists. No. Joe, do they circumcise in China? No. No. Uh. They are. I don't know if you're aware of this, but they're working on, have you heard of foragen.org? I think you told me about that, but I remember. It's a, they're trying to raise money, and it's not even a lot of money. It would be something like, I don't know, $30,000 to do the first trial using stem cells. To, yeah, to regrow it. And I mean, because they can regrow parts of the body now and uh, organs. So I think it's only a matter of time before that happens. And uh, 
And because how do you know when you're circumcised, you don't really know what you're supposed to feel like. But I always knew that there was something wrong because it's sort of desensitized, that area. You can tell. And there's a brain function that probably uh, is disturbed, and, and one's uh, image of a woman, and I'm, by image I'm talking about something neurological, is, is lost. Because it's, you know the circuits aren't there. Are we li are we listening to people who are, who function with their the, the, the little head, or the rather than the bigger head? Are are we incapacitated? I don't, I don't know about the the women. Uh, maybe in China, dear, how they they chop them off. No, they don't. They don't. Mm -hmm. They don't circumcise. They're not circumcised and... No, they don't. No, you don't? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear you. Come over here. Well, I have not uh, have any information about the uh, uh, procedure in Chinese uh, society, community, and uh, it's just not uh, popular. And uh, back to the, uh, the reason they did that, I believe uh, with all the Jewish people, I believe they are programmed. And uh, now by think back, I say, why in the world this specific race needs to do specific s procedure uh, since they're baby? They must have a program agenda uh, within. And so that's what I'm thinking. Here you go. Well, in Africa, they do it to females, and it's considered a crime. I, I mean, it's a crime to do it to either sex. But it, it started a long time ago in Egypt, too, didn't it? I mean, this has been going on for a while. But, you know, I think that uh, all manner of techniques have been brought forward to, uh, to control us. And, I, and I'm saying that I think it's highly probable that we're, uh, we're chattel. We're, we're so something regards us as their property. And, um, so the and it's looking more and more like that all the time. The Zionese consider us cattle. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they call us... Uh, Goyim. Goyim, yeah. Goyim. Well, yeah. that's pretty funny because, of course, they're in that same stew with us. Um, but that's, that's, the, that's the way the, the, the human mind is. You know, you try and uh, get some superiority, you be superior to somebody else. To, and if this, that, that uh, little flame is fanned, you know, then it gets brighter and hotter and uh, people just go down the the pathway of uh, of uh, really what is it probably ultimately destruction by uh, by being caught up in the ego like that. Trevor, how do you feel about it, really? About the circumcision thing? Yes. No, I I totally agree with him because it just shows how programmed we are that you're taken as a baby and your part of your body is removed and this is considered normal. So this is considered it's good for cleanliness. So any part of your body you don't want to clean, you can just cut off. I mean, and it prevents can cancer because you can't get cancer there because they cut it off. So, I mean, it's just outrageous. I mean, it's so primitive. And when they do it in Africa, they say, oh, look at those savages. But then we're doing it and we're not savages because we, we've been so programmed. And then the people who've had it done are so defensive about it. They don't want to admit it because then they admit that they're not whole and they've been violated. Uh, my dad regrets having let them do it to me because at that time they were doing it to everyone and he's intact. And I mean, I didn't even know what normal was. I mean, it takes a long time to realize it, but I always knew that something was wrong there. No, I, I think it's terrible. And I think one day they will be able to restore it and people will realize because there are adults who are uncircumcised who have chosen to become circumcised and, and they're, you know, it's horrible because they can't feel anything. They can't feel or function properly after that. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. That's quite an admission from a, an actor. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, there's so many functions that it provides. I mean, just the, the lubrication and the skin rolling. It's the, the function and the, you know, there's so many things it does. Uh, the nerve endings are the most dense in the entire body that are removed and the lubrication. I mean, there's so many things it does, and, it, and it, the head is totally different when it's protected like that. I mean... So that you, you're saying, in essence, uh, the, 
big head is controlled by the little head. I mean, honestly, um, and if that 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 would be thing to, that, that that would blow me away. Uh, no pun intended. No pun intended. Jeez. It took a, long, a lot of observations to uh, conclude that that, that little uh, bit of surgery would have a profound effect. I mean, how, how would you figure that out, you know? It seems like that was an experiment that was observed over a very long period of time to conclude that that, that uh, is really a way of uh, of damaging a, a species, if if that, that is correct, if the whole I think the thesis is correct, but the way things are going, you know, and the, the, uh, I, I, every day I think it's more and more probable that the uh, big brain control is is uh, actually the case. Are you saying that the big brain species still exists? Yeah, I think that they probably do. They, uh, the other thing that they did, which we need to look into, and uh, which I think they did, we're ruled by psychopaths. I don't see how you can get around that. You look at the, the, uh, the uh, you look at the Rose Garden, the Oval Office. You look at uh, Number Ten Downing Street, all over the. We're we're dominated by psychopaths. How does that come about, Trevor? Ex that is exactly what he is saying. That is exactly what he is saying. We're under, we're under the control of madmen. It's, uh, let's take a look at the uh, television. Mad men. And it's crazy. And it's the truth. Dr. Spencer has an answer. I, I think they really want to, uh, they, they want to overtly dominate the world again. They did during the, the Ice Age. Well, where do you think, if they still exist, where are they? Well, I don't know, but let's say they're not in Starbucks, they're not in Macy's, they're not at uh, AT&T Park. I mean, <laughs> they're out of sight. I, I think that, you know... Um, the Germans <laughs> did an investigation in, in, uh, in the South Pole, around the South Pole, and they talked about... Uh, the existence of a big brain. In fact, uh, the world is mapped by not earthly people, but unearthly people. What do you mean unearthly people? Well, that to me is a big hat. So well, somebody mapped it. We don't know who, but they knew enough to know spherical trigonometry. But they knew how to establish it longitudes. Us. It ain't us good. It doesn't seem to have been us. We don't seem to have been the uh, proprietors of that mysterious Ice Age civilization, that's for sure. Well, if we take a look at the picture of The Thing, The Thing is the mov that movie that was made where the, uh, the, the unearth, the uh, individual ha landed on Earth and uh, was here to set up camp. I think it's a tremendous mistake to talk about something landing on Earth. And I think that movie is not helpful, really. I think it's a huge mistake to talk about extraterrestrials and I always put them in parentheses or something because what we're dealing with most probably is crypto-terrestrials. They're not all that incredibly uh, technologically advanced because they didn't do much during the, what, 100,000 years or 50,000 years, whatever, that they were in charge. And w w they now have our techno weenies uh, building all of these things for them, which are used against us.